What's up, YouTube? It's Johnny Busket. I got a new video for you guys. Um, this one is just going to be a straight up tutorial for anybody who's ever been interested in using TTS or using Tabletop Simulator to play their favorite Cryptozoic games. All right, I'm going to be approaching this from the aspect of someone who has absolutely no idea what TTS is, what a mod for TTS is, even what Steam is, because just for a little context, Back when I was first introduced to this, I was just looking for a way to play these games online. And through a series of different Google searches and links, I stumbled upon this and I ended up stumbling upon a really great community. So I wanna put out a video how to go from knowing nothing um, into being able to do this. Just in case someone else Googles a few things and stumbles upon this video, they'll know how to access this mod, um, access this game, and they'll be able to, of course, play along as well. So what even is Steam? Steam is a platform where you can download games, you can have friends, uh, specifically for PCs and Macs as well. I had never even been on this, so never seen this before playing Tabletop Simulator. It's downloadable online, and I'll show you guys how to do that a little bit later. But also, what is Tabletop Simulator? It's the game you see right here. It's literally a table. There's different games that just come normally with Tabletop Simulator that you can load up. There's different things that you could do, and we'll take a look at all of them. So what you're seeing here is the mod I'm gonna show you guys how to access. I actually, for the majority of the time, play DC DB Cube on here. If you want more information about the DC deck builder and the competitive version on this cube, I'm gonna have links for that in my description. So now let's move on to how do you get these. So the first thing is Steam. You literally can just Google Steam or go to their website and you'll be able to install it for your Windows or for your Mac. This is the platform you're gonna need to play this game. It is free, so you just have to download it, as I said, and then create an account. Now, once you have Steam installed and you've made your account and you open it up, you'll be able to go to the store and buy Tabletop Simulator. This is what it'll look like when you first enter the Steam store. We have a list over here of games played by your friends, recommendations by curators, top sellers lists, all those things. Let's click on top sellers. These are the games most people are playing right now or buying through Steam. Uh, you can start off with this list if you're just looking for random games to play. But of course, the game we're looking for is right here, Tabletop Simulator. So this is actually something that's really great that I was going to get into. Tabletop Simulator goes on sale a lot. And it's usually a 50% sale. So meaning you'll be paying $10 instead of $20. I wasn't one of those lucky people to get it for that amount. But you can be. It's literally on sale right now, October 22nd. At this moment, you can get this for $10. I don't know if it'll be like that when you're watching this video, but it's also just $20, so that's not that much. Now, once you buy Tabletop Simulator, you install it, you open it up, you're also going to need to get the Cryptozoid Games mod. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can get that. You can either get it straight through Steam or you can find it on their website. Mods can be found in a section of the store known as the Workshop. I'm going to show you guys how to get it straight through the internet browser first, and then we'll show how to get it through Steam. So literally, if you just Google Cryptozoic my TTS, literally be the first link. Okay. Once you open it, you know, you're in the right place. When you see it's created by Blacom, Blacom is a member of our DCDB games community on discord. I'm going to have the link for that in my description as well. But he's took his time for months and even, I believe, years at this point. Uh, yes, yeah, so he was posted in 2016 to create this mod and update it over and over and over and make it great. Right. So what you see here is what it used to look like. He's done a tremendous job with this thing. I'm going to go into detail about what everything is and how that looks once we open it. But he's done a great job and we thank him for that. But you will need this mod in order to play it. Right. So with any mod in the Steam Workshop, it works by subscribing. So if you see this green button right here that says subscribe, you literally just need to log into your Steam account up here and click the subscribe button. And then the mod will be found when you open up Tabletop Simulator. That's one way to do it, right? And that was pretty easy. That was pretty quick. There's another way to do it through Steam. So when we open Steam back up again, you go up here to community, click on workshop. And now we need to search for Tabletop Simulator. Now we found it. And this is tabletop simulator section of the Steam Workshop. This is where all the tabletop mods can be found. So now we're just gonna type in Cryptozoic, hit enter. And right there in the middle, Cryptozoic Entertainment Deck Builder, Blacon. We're gonna click that one. And just like you saw when we went to the link on the website, 
there's a little subscription button here created by Blade.com and we subscribe I'm already subscribed so but you would just click that button and you'll be able to access it in the game that was a few more steps than just the Google and then the click but I mean either way you like to do it I want to make sure I showed you both so with that being said we now have Steam we have tabletop simulator we subscribe to the mod now we can open up the game and actually play the mod so here we are at the main menu of tabletop simulator this is what it'll look like uh, when it first opens i suggest when you first get on this you do the tutorial it's going to show you how to interact with cards it's going to show you how to do different things i think it's pretty important you should just go ahead and take out the five minutes to do the tutorial right but when you first get in here let's say you're joining a friend it's going to show you a nice little list like this of players and the types of games they're playing there's a bunch of different tabletop games that can be played on this but we won't need that one other note is that only the host of the room needs to have the mod so if you're playing with a few friends only one person needs to subscribe it's free so i mean all you guys probably should subscribe just in case you want to host one day but like i said only one person needs it so you will go to create multiplayer you can change your server name you can change the server password and create a server now when you first open a table it'll look like this you see a generic table in the background but it will change based on what game you're playing and these are the classic games available inside tabletop already here's the downloadable content that you can buy and here's everything i'm subscribed to on the workshop so let's open up cryptozoic games by blade Crew. and then once we finally get it loaded here's the table let's take a look around just to see all the work he's put into this like it, these comic books on the side actually go up even higher and even lower but just because of the table we can't really look down and up too far but there's a lot of work that's into this table so if we look around you can see there's dedicated spaces for everything whether your characters your discard pile your destroy pile places for the deck places for the lineup places for your stack a clock over here there's many different things and elements that come to this table we'll kind of explain a little bit of all of it this table is scripted meaning that there's actions that you don't have to do manually they're just done at the click of a button over on the left side we have many of the different games you can play i'll show you that in a second and on the right side over here we have the score pads so let me save my camera i'll go over here to the left and show you all of the games these are the playable cryptozoic deck building games that are on this mod the only three that don't work are these last three and that's because the cards aren't actually there yet usually you can pull a bag off of it like this this one does have the bag but there's only one thing in it and that's the instruction manual these other games you can actually pull off their bag and you will find inside those bags all the items you need to play the game right now of course you can just take the bag and take the games out and set it up as you want but there's a much easier way to do that if you come over here to game selection and you click it you can see that you can load all the games just by a click of a button all the dc games are here if you want to set up a dc base set with an expansion you can do that here the other cryptozoic games are found on this tab and if you click this button this will load the dc db cube which is once again the dc deck builder competitive variant you can also select a random game um, that's available right there one other thing i should show you is the settings right here you can clear the table you can toggle clearing table you can refill the lineup toggle you can toggle refilling the lineup automatically you can toggle flipping a new boss automatically and i'll show you why you may want to turn those on and off as well one other thing before i start loading the games i talked about things being scripted a lot of that information is found here in the notebook whether that's how to play or how you should be interacting with different things you can come in the notebook and you can find some helpful tips right in there but let's load up a game. Let's start off with loading up Rebirth. The table changed completely. So if you play Rebirth or you know what it is, you know the setup is a lot different from the other deck building games, especially the other DC deck building games. So the table changes for that. One thing is when you're playing Rebirth, a lot of the actions or things you need to pay attention to will show up down here in the chat box. And a couple things showed up just now. Lineup refill, and boss flipping have been disabled so those won't happen automatically when you're playing this version of dc and that's for a reason a lot of these actions within the game are very specific so it's not exactly scripted yet and you will have to do it manually so if you loaded up rebirth and then you want to go back and load up the cube you will have to make sure that you toggle those back on in the settings like so and as you can see it's now enabled 
as you're playing through a rebirth campaign it could take a while because there's many of those different uh games within one campaign you can actually save that by going to games save and load and you can save that for yourself and load it back up for later now that we actually have this open i can kind of show you guys how this works as you can see when i loaded up the game our boss stack was automatically made and i don't know what's in here so that's the great part about it the kicks were placed the weaknesses were placed the reserve stack was placed and also the character lineup was placed as well for us to do drafting now for every person that's sitting at the table a starter deck will be placed in front of them seven punches and three vulnerabilities if you're familiar with that those are automatically placed to anybody who's sitting at the table now if i go to switch colors you can see that there's four colors around the table and two in the middle these are the playable seats here green red white and yellow the two in the middle are spectator seats. Gray, you can't interact with anything on the table. Black can interact with things at the table, but they don't have a dedicated discard pile and spaces for their deck and characters. So that black seat is not meant for anybody who's actually playing in the game. Now, let me show you why I said the tutorial was really important. So if I grab these cards right here, there's many different things I can do. The tutorial teaches you how to grab one off the stack, how to flip them, how to shuffle them, how to gather them, how to take a card and place it underneath other cards, how to grab multiple at once. All those good things are in the tutorial and you're gonna need to know them to have a smooth transition into the game. Now, along with that, this specific mod has scripts as well. So I just drew my hand. One other thing I should show you about this is that your hand can show up real big at the bottom of your screen. You can have a look at it that way, or you can hit H to hide it and just look at it regularly as it sits in your hand. Anybody sitting around the table, they will only see the back side of your cards. They can't see into your hand. There's a hidden zone there that will keep them from being able to see your hand until it comes out of the zone, right? You can kind of see it highlighted a little bit there. Now for the scripts. If you have a number pad, you can actually hit one to randomly discard a card, two to gain a VP, three to shuffle your deck from your discard pile, four to destroy a card like that, five to lose a VP, six to put a card at the bottom of the main deck, seven to gain a weakness, eight to select a random player. There's nobody at the table, so it won't do it. As you can see, a little error message popped up in the chat. And nine would be to put a card on top of the main deck like that, right? So all those things are scripted and you only need to press one button to make them happen. Now, if you don't have a number pad, I'm going to give you a helpful tidbit because this was me when I was playing on my second laptop. You go to menu, you go to configuration, you go to controls, you scroll down to scripts. And you can actually change those there. So if you don't have a number pad, you can make it whatever you need it to be on your keyboard. Now, I picked up some cards. I'm going to go ahead and just grab two of these main characters just to get us started move these out of the way when you're hosting a table the way you play your cards is that you're gonna add a play turn area onto the table so you go to options turns and turn that on now we have somewhere to actually play our cards so once i get done playing my turn i grab some cards to buy and i hit end turn up here since there's no one else at the table it won't do anything it'll just stay with me so i'm gonna actually get up and show you what it looks like when you end your turn so let me get up from my seat and as you can see the lineup automatically refilled the cars that were in my play area went to the scar pile and if there was someone else sitting right here that play area would have shifted over to them automatically i'm gonna draw a new hand i'm gonna play that hand again and i'm gonna buy the boss same thing when a boss is bought it's gonna automatically refill for you so let me go ahead and turn that play area back on. And as you can see, the boss was automatically refilled. And just to do that for you again, I'll buy that. I'll stand up and it automatically refilled, right? So that's another great thing about the table. Another thing that happened when I added turns, the timer started. So as you can see, it's been counting down. That's gonna keep track of how much time you have left. If you're playing the cube version, there is still gonna be a timer if you're playing anything else. So if you wanna adjust that, you can do that by right clicking it and changing the time. So once our game is finished and we're trying to figure out who won, we'll take our deck over to the scoring pads. Each player will put it on their color that's designated for them. And then you're gonna hit check scores. If you're playing the competitive version, DCDB Cube, these games can be ranked and reported to their website. 
links in the description once again uh but check that out and you guys will be able to play those games and rank them as you like so that's pretty much it for the most part if you guys have any questions feel free to leave a comment i'll be glad to answer them or make a video for you if it's that extensive also like and subscribe i'll have more videos like this coming up soon there'll be a new season of coming out for dcbb cube and i'll be detailing that as well so definitely please follow and we'll be able to get more videos like this to you asap hopefully we can have blade Com come actually sit down and talk about the table more with us for you guys who are interested in that information thanks for watching my video peace